taking profits into early December by selling into the market strength. We're also looking to see how to understand what the commodity's impacts are on the Australian market. The man guiding us through is Gary Glover from Novus Capital. Good morning, Gary. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, Chris. It's uh, exciting to come back for another week to set up the selling into December or selling into the strength in December. You did load up in October and you called that one pretty well. And the timing of those midterm elections, market lows, and that led you to be 97% invested, which for you is kind of unusual. Are you still pretty heavily invested? <laughs> yeah, it is unusual. That, yeah, uh, yeah, no, still pretty heavily invested, but uh, definitely eyes on the prize at the moment, sort of just trying to try and milk the market for a little bit more here. It's pretty choppy out there. Definitely things are popping and dropping and then popping and dropping. So it's, uh, yeah, quite choppy there. So just starting to, you know, think about lining up a few cells here and cell levels there. I just sort of think it's not going to, doesn't look like it's going to be a market where it all gets to the the peaks all at the same time. <laughs> so I think you, you might have to sort of take a few things off into strength if you see, see some of the stocks sort of pop a little bit, try and, um, try and take a bit off there. So just that's the only thing here. So I still think it's still grind higher here. Um, but um, yeah, just going to probably start to, work on the exit strategy now and um, yeah, try and take a few things off into the strength there. Um, and you've definitely seen some disparity in the market too, like growth is underperforming, NASDAQ is struggling there, whereas value shares are just going, yeah, they're saying showing super strength as well. So you've definitely seen, you know, that, that character in the market here at the moment. So um, yeah, probably just got to trade around that a bit. That's probably a good uh, point. As you're saying, they're, pff, they're not all going to hit at the same time. That's That shows up in the indices. If we have a look at the NASDAQ, we'll make our way through the indices, but it's still underperforming compared to the other markets we look at. Is there a same thesis playing out? Just no change? Yeah, yeah. So massively underperforming, actually. Sort of really sort of can't get going. So apart from that sort of one week there, when the CPI print sort of come up a little bit, it's been, it's been pretty dull here. So... Um, yeah, struggling to sort of get going here. So I think all these sort of fang stocks are sort of, they're probably, you know, yeah, they were holding the market up at the top. You know, if you remember there that most of the stocks were, I think, you know, more than 50% of the stocks were already below their 50 day moving average while we peaked. So the, so the fang stocks are doing the heavy lifting, which is sort of what you, you know, the textbook sort of suggests is you know you get thinner and thinner at the top there, so you get fewer and fewer winners, um, and the, the leaders do the heavy lifting at the end, and then the market breaks, and then that, that it all comes off here. But so those weaker stocks, you know, had, had come off before then, but now you're sort of fang stocks. You know, your, your leadership group is sort of as the market's tried to rally here, they're they're sort of still still showing weakness, still sort of finding their lows here. So. Um, yeah, interesting there. But that's that's sort of again, those sort of stocks will not be the next leaders. So there's I know some people falling into the trap of sort of trying to buy those former leaders there, but the former leaders aren't well, yeah, don't don't become new leaders. Very very rare, you know. So might be one out of you know, five or one out of ten that might might, you know, come back here. But majority, I think you know, probably seven, eighty percent of those old leaders won't become new leaders there. So there'll be a new new leadership group. Um, emerge there so um, you'll be looking elsewhere as they say so but yeah we might get might go back and retest that trend line there I think that's probably where we probably get to um, but yeah a bit of a struggle here so far well one where we could be seeing some more leaders in the new part of the market is the SP500 it has been performing better than the NASDAQ but it seems to have slowed down a little bit is this um, downtrend line still kind of a target area for December yeah, much healthier move here. It's funny, I've sort of got I've got some Elnaz and some Gigas left in my portfolios across the, you know, and <laughs> the Gigas is, is is really outperforming the Elnaz. So I trimmed some of the Elnaz, but I probably wish I'd trimmed it all and, and put it into Gigas here. But um but yeah, this again, probably got two lines there, probably got that, that overhead uh, trend line to just to keep an eye on. Um but I do, do sort of favour a move back to 4,200, actually. I just think it, um, oftentimes the market, when they sort of bounce out of these October lows, 
So I'll usually go back up near the previous swing high there, which is our August high. So I prefer for it to get back up there. So it might get up there or might just fall short of that level, which is sort of similar to, I think, the 60-year you know, pattern and also the, um, you're looking at that 02, 03 period as well, which is sort of our 20-year pattern. So just a few of the key cycles in the past they got near that but just you know maybe just shy of it so 4200 there would probably be a good level there just to keep an eye on there for um, s p and if we move to the aussie it's been holding tight near these recent highs but the real question is in that tug of war that you've mentioned between the inflation cycles where commodities can perform well but also the business cycles where commodities can quite often hit the low the bonds go first, the equity markets, and then the commodity markets. So how's that tug of war that uh, still confusing on the Aussie? Yeah, it's a little, I got a few little conflicting signals there. I mean, um, just on the XJO there, that 7200 level, definitely a bit of a resistance at that point. There's been a few touches in the past there. So to go back to the 20 high um, before the COVID sell off there, and then we had a few little lows in as well. So Definitely a level to keep an eye on there. Um, but I think, you know, I do think it should go a little bit higher here, just, you know, push push on uh, maybe, maybe towards 7,300 there, but just got to keep an eye on those levels. Um, but, yeah, no, it's a bit of an arm wrestle at the moment. Sort of funny on the weekend there, I saw, you know, probably the lithium sector was the one that looked the scariest to me, but I sort of looked, I you know, saw a lot of those stocks out. There's some massive um, spinning tops and reversals on the lithium stocks, like all the major, all the, the stocks that have been doing the leading, they 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 reversed pretty hard last week. So it kind of reminded me of the coal stocks about a month ago, where the, you know, the, the look of them, sort of have those really big moves when we're running and then massive reversal there. So got to be careful of those. And I saw the mid-cap miners as well, that index looked, had a massive reversal as well. So just a few mining stocks there. Um, the CIB index as well looked a little wary to me. So, um, yeah, just just a few signs there. Just to be careful with resources there. Um, been pretty volatile. Definitely been up and down here. It's, I'm finding that one, the, that's probably the hardest sector to read here at the moment is a commodity. So let's say like not, the normal cycle is for them to find a low, you know, a few months later after equities. Um, but the high inflationary environment, which we we are in, commodities are often reasonably buoyant in that in that tougher market as well. So, so yeah, definitely a bit of an arm wrestle there at the moment. So, um, still don't like the look of that commodity index to me. It's more of a sideways type of move here, coming off a little bit of a positive move down here. So, still looks a little shaky to me. Looks like it might want to go a bit lower. Um, but yeah, we sort of hope maybe that some of these commodities sort of cool off here, um, particularly things like your energy complex and stuff like that. Probably that the bigger inflation mark is there because they do sort of cool off there. That you know, that's you know, we, we want to see really inflation cool off because if most of those inflation measures do cool off for next year, then we can have a really good year in equities. If if they don't really cool off, then that, that could be a bit of a grind. You know, it could be like a forty sort of seventy style grind here. So. We prefer to sort of see a strong bull market than a than a grind here. So, um, but yeah, there's definitely definitely the sort of uh, probably the trickiest part of the market actually is commodities at the moment. Just um, just because of that sort of commodity, that the inflation factor is sort of definitely holding them up here. Well, when you have a look at the um, commodities market, you obviously pulled that apart with the Aussie and saying that seventy two is sort of a, a region to look for. The Dow Jones is somewhat removed from the commodities, significantly different market, more of the value side and industrials. How's that seems to be sort of the best performing of the charts that you've pulled up here. So is that still leading? Yeah, like I think somewhere around about 35,000 would be just that would be the average rally off mid off the midterm year. That's just the average rally because that's not a strong rally or, you know, so that's just an average rally. So, that's so people don't, you know, people think we're seeing something different here. We've been, you know, we're actually not seeing anything different at all. We're just seeing an average move off the midterm year low. So, um, yeah, so just, you know, probably a bit of level, 
to watch here. I, you know, it's showing some real strength here so far. The Dow, so maybe we go higher. Maybe it goes up to you know what thirty five two. There is a bit of a bit of a level. So maybe we'll shoot higher there. Um, you know, just going to remember back to the thing. Some of the sort of crazy markets. You remember back to that 2000, um, 2002 period, as the you know Nasdaq was sort of making lower highs. The the XJO was actually expanding to new highs. So and same with the you know the S and P and the Dow are making lower highs. Obviously the Dow is coming back deeper, um, but the all ordinary has actually expanded to new highs twice in that period. So you know well, the S and P is making lower highs and lower lower high. We're we're making a new high, marginal new high, and another margin new high. So can can get those different uh, our performance in different markets there. So um, you know if we remember that. That inflation sort of chart we showed there previously, you know, sort of see, you know, obviously energy number one and you know, precious metals number two, and then value shares were number three. So it was, you know, I think 13.5% was the um, was the average return there for value shares throughout that period. So pretty robust. So we can all probably live off 13.5% returns just, you know, in value shares. And then if you can actually trade them, you know, a bit better there. You can probably average that up, maybe the eighteen twenty if you're any good. So that's that's not bad as well, you know. So that's probably the safest segment to be trading in here if history is any guide. So that's where I'll probably be looking, you know, until I sort of start to see that inflation. I saw you know, someone was uh, listening to analysts this morning. He was he was talking about six point six. He was talking about you referred to eighty two in that um, once inflation, you know, sort of. I think the inflation sort of spiked in, in 82, but then once it sort of cut back below 6.6, .6, the market was then sort of convinced that inflation was was done and was going to head a lot lower. If it didn't sort of, you know, so he was sort of suggesting, few people are already talking about that number, anything under 6.6 .6 might get the market really excited about inflationary pressures easing there, so... Well, that was an interest. That's probably the interesting too. But I saw in the market this morning, so I scrubbed down that number. And um, so, well, um, yeah, if we get if we get a, a print here, we probably won't get it in December. We might get it in January below there. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a number that can definitely get the market going. So, an inflation down towards those levels, like you mapped out before, it doesn't have to be low inflation, like two or three percent. Just it needs to drop somewhat. And the market yeah. can go on a tear with that. Um, That's right. Yeah. Positive news. Yeah. It's always interesting to see what the market's talking about, and then yeah, different analysts, and then yeah, if they're talking about a number there, magic number, it's always always nice to sort of um see what people are talking about. Yeah. So, so just or just interesting people were talking about six six, sort of a level that in the past there, which has been a beacon of hope. <laughs> so, we'll um we'll uh, we'll wait and see. What's been tied up into inflation, commodities, and pushing and pulling markets all around the globe is that US dollar index. Now you've got the chart in here. This is a chart that you did put in the report a couple of weeks ago talking about vertical trends and saying when you get these accelerating trend lines, they yeah. can be quite a problem because they all end badly. They do, uh, yeah. What's happening here? Yeah, so we've got three ascending trend lines on the weekly. It's basically what um, McLaren used to refer to as a vertical trend. And then once those vertical trends break, then you normally get big declines there. We've seen we've seen that in NASDAQ in the past. We've seen it with Shanghai and the Nikkei, you know, we've seen these big, big moves here. So you see it across commodities occasionally as well. Um, but yeah, you normally get some pretty big declines that follow there. So might get a you know a break like this, maybe you go back a little bit deeper. You'll probably get a bounce, a high low, but then the medium to sort of longer term is is pretty negative. So, you know, be looking to at least come back to that that old high there uh, around 103. But historically, they end up being quite deeper. You know, usually end up coming back a lot further here. So probably we, you know, could 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 expect a move to come back under 100 there. Um, on that, that's the dollar index there, just basically. So. Yeah, just suggest we'll see a bit of weakness there. That's probably good for you know, um, you know, diff different markets and stuff there. But um, yeah, it's um, yeah, just drive just driving up with like a lot of things here. So I think quite good for equities um, or U.S. equities anyway. Um, if the dollar comes off, you know, I think 
gold's been probably hampered by a strong US dollar, so that that'll be a plus. It has been a plus already for them. So yeah, just potentially a few stocks could be gets you know some advantage there by seeing that US dollar cool off a little bit. You know, when we talk about stocks and individual shares, you've picked up some trading shares this week. If we start off with Harvey Norman, looking at that weekly chart, you've got this nine up, nine down, and it looks like this nine down is kind of holding what you've got here is sixty one point eight percent of the range. So it's that's right, um, yeah. Right. What, what's the significance of this? Yeah, so I mean, it's, you know, McLaren used to say it was, you know, the market's as simple as counting one to ten. You know, so if you can count how many weeks up and how many weeks down, you can sort of see how strong the market is, or or how or how weak it is. And you know, in this case here, we've sort of we've rallied up nine weeks, and then we've then we've sort of pulled back the same amount of time, and only come back sixty one point percent of the range. I think the volume probably dried up in that period as well. And then you're looking for sort of hopefully some volume to come back in again. So it's sort of a little bit of volume at the low there. Hasn't followed through the last couple of weeks here, but still still think this looks kind of supportive there. Still getting some surprising data, quite positive in retail sector here. So everyone's everyone's thinking the worst, but um, so far the data is not pointing to that, even though, you know, obviously maybe things are tightening up. So you know, maybe you'll see some weaker data later on, but so far... Economy showing quite resilience actually in um, in the face of what you know might be a recession or a slowdown, as everyone's saying here. But uh, you say so far the data's pretty resilient. But the thing I like about having on actually, this is probably a little sweetener for me is that, that there's got a quite a decent property portfolio as well. Having on, so a little different from some of the other retailers, so holds quite a lot of property assets there. So you know, if we are going to be in high inflationary period there. Um, you know, typically asset values, you know, increase there. So, you know, I think the property portfolio there probably give, might give these guys an edge over some other retailers there because um, those valuations all, you know, should increase there over time. I know everyone thinks, you know, we're going to have a massive correction in property prices there. So you get a bit of a cooling here with rates going high. That's obvious. But if you look through those, you know, recessionary periods, so not recessionary periods, high inflationary periods, as, as, you know, all the asset classes sort of, you know, generally sort of moved higher there. And obviously, they performed stronger in um, in lower inflation environments, but you still need to be long assets in an in inflationary environment. And you've seen that in the past there. It's sort of your, your returns actually are, you know, uh, are not bad, you know, in those environments as well. It's sort of if, you know, if you're not, if you don't have those assets sort of going up in value um, and you're just wearing the cost of everything else going up in value, then, then you're the loser. Um, you know, the people with the you know the most amount of assets, they're the ones who win at the end of the day through those inflationary environments. So yeah, it's sort of toughest on the poorest people, unfortunately. Um, and, and those with, you know, the asset rich um, are the ones who sort of come out the other end a bit better here. So um, that's that's the sort of thing here. So just, I just try to think, I think having no one's pretty interesting there. So a um, little, little different from most of the others. And I think, yeah, Technically, it looks pretty good as well. Yeah. Well, Jumbo Interactive, JI, and this um, this chart here. What's happened since that sort of slow? It's kind of undercut this one here. Yeah. What's, uh, what's happening? Yeah, so that the volumes aren't sort of heavy in there, but they haven't been heavy. They've been pretty mild, actually, pretty light all the way down. So there's been no real sort of heavy selling, that correction there. And... Um, yeah, so just had a yeah, it's had a reasonable pullback there. What are we sort of twenty down to, you know, eleven fifty? So pretty decent decline there. But what's a fairly you know, I'm a, a pretty simple business, Jumbo. Um, you know, selling lotteries, which is you know, uh, to be honest, with you, I think this is a good you know recessionary sort of inflationary. <laughs> you know, people are feeling it tight. That's the one. You know, things like you know, you know food and. Alcohol, gambling, things like these people, people like just historically don't give those things up. Um, might, they might give up some of the other, like, you know, holidays or going out to dinner, things like that. These are the things that generally sort of stay here. So, you know, um, you know you look, you're looking for a way out of your misery sometimes. Um, so, you know, the gambling is definitely an interesting area there. Um, yeah, it's just pretty like good margins in this business. So, I, I like this one here. I think it looks quite good. Volumes aren't that strong here, but if you look at, um, I think, AIA, uh, SKC, was sort of um, were two two stocks that sort of similar, sort of broken out 
um, probably a month ago. And similar, I probably didn't have big volume sort of breakouts there, but once I go out of the range, I just they just tend to just tick higher. So so maybe we'll just get the slow the slow dance sort of um, you know high here. Um, so yeah, just just think about what what stocks are gonna maybe perform better. You know, you know, either recessionary or higher inflationary environment. Sort of, if you know, if those sort of do do come on here, so just got to probably think about that a bit more. Um, but yeah, this this one that looks all right. Another one you've picked up is MGH, so Mass Group. That's a pretty solid downtrend, but it just seems stubborn to going under that sort of yeah. thirty area. Yeah, you, you often see this actually on a shorter uh, time frame. So when a stock IPOs has initial sort of flurry, everyone gets excited by it. Um, then all the news front sort of dries up and then usually comes back and retests its sort of opening price and then they're not then then usually off they go. Yeah. <laughs> so um, then news the news starts to flow later on. So this is a little longer this cycle. So probably had a really good jump you now when it first sort of floated here. And then yeah you know, it's had it almost gone up three times. And now, now it's sort of you know went through a bit of a sideways move and then had a fairly large contraction here. So, um, yeah, actually, it's an interesting company here actually. Sort of mining service, sort of construction orientated there. I think management you know, is pretty. If I'm not mistaken there. I think um, management insider has got a pretty big stake in this business as well. So um, on a register there, I think um, you know there's, there's there's a lot of. A lot of insiders holding holding stock here, so just yeah, it's it's just interesting to sort of come back and retest that low. So a bit of a false break down here. Some reasonable volume coming in down here as well at the moment. So um, yeah, this is definitely one to keep an eye on here. It's sort of just seen this sort of you know I've seen this film before, Chris. It's sort of you know just normally it's sort of more of a shorter sort of scale. Um, normally happens a lot faster than this, but uh, definitely one to sort of keep an eye on down here. Probably not, a bad, probably not a bad risk reward here too, you know, sort of, which is I like, you know, sort of, you can sort of buy it maybe around that 230 mark there where the, where the stop sort of went just under 220 there, you know, it's got a pretty low risk. Start with a small position and then maybe build if it sort of starts to move up here. Um, but yeah, just one that looks pretty interesting there to me. Well, uh, the final one on the list is you've got points bet. So sort of in the gambling space again, but this downtrend is just, seems to be relentless it's just going this one. yeah yeah, <laughs> <Tell me>. yeah. <laughs> what, what do you look at first when you dig up a chart like this yeah like i just sort of the thing that sort of struck me a little bit here this this has been in a pretty nasty decline but it just started a flat line here the last um so off that low it's sort of gone what three or four weeks sort of sideways and then which is not a, not a good sign but then we've had three or four weeks down and it hasn't followed through. So I thought, okay, that's sort of that's sort of not not sort of pushing through to a new low here. So I was just sort of, you know, now now our sellers are sort of, you know, are not really pushing this thing lower here. So just starting to flatline here. So it's just sort of one to keep an eye on there. Um, yeah, points. It's, it's interesting, obviously, the you know, that US gambling market. Obviously, you know, talks about how big that potential market is there. Um, you know, first move advantage, trying to get a leg up there in that, that market there. So points bet sort of definitely has has done, you know, they're really spending big to sort of try and um, capture a place in those markets there. So, um, yeah, re yeah, probably at the, at the at the sake of the balance sheet there. And, yeah, it's, you know, I've had to raise money here, I think, just because they're really trying to get a footprint. But yeah, you know, with yeah, you know, I think with the World Cup coming up as one of the biggest sort of sporting events there, might might sort of trigger potential sort of trigger sort of something there. But um, yeah, just probably one to keep an eye on. Pretty high risk, pretty high risk. Yeah, I I I do actually like this business here. I think there's um, I think there's you know potentially can come good here, but um, yeah, not 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 with that as risk here. I, if I was be trading this one, I'd be trading very small, and I'd be very tight on my on my mount here. So, um, yeah, and it's definitely one I'd probably only be, you know, you just got to wait for sort of something a bit more positive and sort of start adding to it. So, you know, I'd be starting with a tiny positive and then, you know, only adding to it once I start to see little swing highs start to get broken there. But 
Just one sort of stock to sort of keep an eye on there. Just just starting to sort of see the selling dissipate here. So, um, yeah, interesting. We'll see how that one plays out, but it's a good short list to take into the week. And uh, obviously, we've worked through your weekly report. So we say thank you very much, Gary Glover from Novus Capital. No problem. Thanks, Chris. Now, Gary's mentioned um, a few things in the in today's video. Uh, if you do want to follow some of the strategies that he's talked about, and he's covered them in a bit more detail, he's talked about inflation, 30, uh, 60 cycles and the like, that playlist is on the right with the trading strategies. There's also on the Friday videos, we go through the leading sectors and groups, and occasionally we pick out some questions. So if you want to put some questions in the comments below, maybe, and we can pick one or two of those out for Friday. And then also follow Gary on Twitter. That's on the left-hand side. His handle's over there. So that will wrap with and we'll come back on Friday.